So I'm speaking uh, now with uh, retired pastor Graham Burkhart, um, who was serving at uh, Bethel EMC in New Dundee, Ontario. Um, Bethel has already sponsored a refugee family in the past in response to the Syrian civil war. Um, and that was a, a largely positive experience for you um, or for the whole church. And uh, so how did this opportunity to sponsor another family come about? Well, at the time that they made first contact with us, but at the time we were investigating bringing the brother and his family of the uh, Syrian lady that we had sponsored. Uh, her brother is a pediatrician in Syria who had to flee his uh, place of practice. They had, they had moved into Lebanon, but unfortunately because they really couldn't be employed in Lebanon, they did go back across the border into Syria, which forfeited their refugee status. So we were working to bring them and then uh, this family made contact and it was a phone call. We received a phone call at the office. The, uh, the fact is our media does not necessarily serve us well with what's going on in the world. And so at the first contact, um, my secretary passed it on to me and the, um, this lady introduced herself as a, a refugee in Thailand. And my first question was, are you part of the Rohingya Muslim population? Because that's what our media was telling us. The uh, Rohingya Muslims from Myanmar were fleeing into Thailand. And she said, no, we are Christians from Pakistan. And uh, so while we're talking, I'm typing to see, if, is this a thing? Uh, and discovered that there are many Pakistani Christians who are seeking refuge in Thailand. And uh, now Thailand is not receptive to asylum seekers or refugee status. And so they were, after their visitor's visa expired, they were illegals. And so that was the case when they made, made contact. So they contacted us. Uh, because we were still working on the possibility of bringing uh, the brother of this uh, uh, lady that we previously sponsored, uh, I told her that we were not in position to do it, but that I would extend uh, the opportunity. And I did take that to the ministerial retreat in October of that year and uh, just shared the opportunity and said, if anybody's interested, please speak to me. And uh, well, nobody was interested and so, because I, or they forgot because they did, no one spoke to me. When it fell through with Nazar, this fellow from Syria and his family, uh, there were some that said, well, perhaps the Lord would have us to take on the sponsorship. And so it began. Okay. Um... And uh, so you guys had to sort of establish this relationship online. Um, what did you do or how did you, um, how did you build that connection and that relationship with them prior to them coming? Um, emails, phone calls, we were able to, uh, to converse regularly, certainly going through the paperwork process, but uh, I had various conversations and two with the pastor from, from the church in Thailand. So. That's how the relationship uh, was established through that through that period. Great, yeah. Um, and so uh, the family arrived in Canada during the pandemic. So that I'm sure created some uh, obstacles and challenges there. Um, how did the team manage through that? Um, and how, like describe how the team was involved in the roles that they might've had uh, through the process of the sponsorship period? Well, with, with this family, we did end up with a, a rental that was, we started renting in May and they didn't then end up coming till October. Uh, that was a case of, again, because of pandemic, we, we needed to pull the trigger on an opportunity for a rental. Uh, the other option, and we had vetted this with the family, is uh, would they be willing to to share some space when they first arrive until we could um, arrange something else for them. And they were very open to that prospect. Uh, the problem is, is because of the pandemic, they could not 
do that with anyone who is over 65 years of age. And so that, that limited our options greatly. And so as a result, we, we did end up with, and the Kitchener area is very high press, priced rent these days. And uh, so we did end up spending a considerable amount of money uh, in rental for a place to get ready. Well, the good news is it was very ready. And so the team uh, amassed what was needed. Uh, I'd given them contacts as well. So they were able to make first person connections with the family, talking about how to furnish the apartment, uh, st even staples for food as far as what, uh, what they'd like in their pantry. And so there was a couple of different people who had made good connection prior to their arrival in that regard as well. Uh, again, partially pandemic related, we had in the process of pandemic, a made facility for online uh, presentation of our services and um, invested some money to increase the quality of our of our production as well as it turned out to be more than two months like who would have known and so they were able to regularly uh, become part of the service in that sense and so that they would uh, regularly uh, watch the service and and so they felt very much like it was their home church well before they arrived. And so that, you know, the relationship was built on all those, on all of those fronts. I, I have heard uh, that you have been very involved with the sponsorship and the, the kids are, see you as a grandfather type figure, <laughs> which is a beautiful thing. I love that. Um, perhaps you can share about how that personal relationship has developed with you uh, specifically. <laughs> Well, I mean, they see us somewhat as as uh, parents to them. They are they are the age of our two oldest children, so uh, it's kind of an easy an easy fit. Uh, finally, did have an opportunity to have them uh, with our whole family. When uh, well, I shouldn't say our whole family. There's a few missing, but our uh, we have a handful of kids, and they were all there. Not all of their uh, their kids and and so on were all there, but. Uh, it had been more that they meet a few, one here, one here, and that was largely pandemic related. So they they feel very much integrated into our family as, as well in that regard. Um, so we're able to, to sit and talk with them. Um, they, have, they have regular contact. Uh, his parents passed away many years ago, but uh, her father calls every day and has all the way through the time that they were in in uh, Thailand as well. So he makes a daily contact. So um, we're not replacing grandparents, but uh, coming alongside in that in that regard. Well, and I suppose with the pandemic, um, spending time with them has been limited. So you haven't been able to um, maybe go into each other's homes as often. Um, there's probably been some factors there as well, I imagine. No, I don't. I don't think anything of, of it has been pandemic related. I mean, if, if any, we are bubbled with them <laughs> in that sense. Uh, so, for example, last evening, uh, Lori and I were out for dinner, but we stopped at a grocery store. She gave them a quick call. Uh, they have their G one licenses, but not their G two in Ontario. That means that they can drive with another driver beside them, not by themselves, and so that they're uh, somewhat dependent on on uh, other means of transportation. So uh, we were going to this grocery store, called them up just to see if there's anything that they needed. And they were able to check out what was on special there. And, and we picked things up. So we stopped in and we, we told them, okay, we, we're not staying for tea tonight. Uh, it's really tough to get out of their house without eating something. <laughs> and it's great food, right? So... <laughs> But uh, I, have a, I have a high capacity for uh, spicy food, so uh, it works well. And uh, their food is certainly not as spicy as some many of the, uh, the Indian versions that you get if you just across the border from Pakistan into India. Same spice is just uh, tamed down a little bit. But uh, if he's sending me something, he will make sure that there's some red chilies in it and things like that. So. Well, I love that. It kind of feels like quite a bit. 
you know, that many times they'll be joining us here for meals or, or we'll be at their place. And, and like I said, it's very difficult to go without having something to eat or um, you know, certainly a tea. <laughs> Oh, I love that because obviously it's uh, it's it's bringing you into their family. It's a hospitality of like we share our lives together, and it's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, Pastor Dan is doing a, se a short series right now on hospitality, and uh, on Sunday afternoon we had been out uh, you know, one of our grandson's ball games, and we um, actually had a bicycle uh, for him for dad that uh, we were going to drop around and so uh, afterwards so I uh, we stopped in and uh, his you know first question was well have you eaten uh, well no but you don't have to feed well they wanted to feed us right away and so while we were sitting there at the table uh, he commented and and, uh, and said well I was listening to the sermon this morning <laughs> you know, so about being hospi hospitable and uh, so Again, the humor came through, but uh, so we were having fun with that. Nice. All right. And so how would you say your life has been enriched by uh, this particular sponsorship experience? Oh, um, you know, I mean, for us, we've had we've had experience with two sponsorships now. Um, the Bethel Church had done a previous sponsorship back in the late 70s. With, the, with those known as boat people at the time, but that was before our time here. Uh, I, would, I would say the involvement with both these families has, has definitely been life enriching. And uh, I mean, little details like, I wouldn't have known that it was 46 degrees in Pakistan yesterday, except that, <laughs> that they had uh, told us about that. Um, so that, I mean, but that's just detail stuff, right? But to be able to see the world through the eyes of those who have been displaced, uh, to be able to care for, for them and their, and their multiple needs, uh, to help them get their feet on the ground, to make sure that we are in position and, and sensitive that we do not make all their decisions for them. We help them with their options, uh, make sure that they have some instruction as to what all should be considered, but then not tell them that this is what you need to do and, and so on. And, and it would be easy to fall into that because, I mean, they walked into an apartment that was set up with furniture that we put there as a, as a committee, you know, so we, we arranged that stuff. And it was rather interesting when we told them, said, oh, by the way, this is all yours. And uh, the appliances belong to the landlord, but all this other stuff is your stuff. <laughs> so. If you want to replace it, it's up to you. You know that it's yours. You can do what you can do with it what you want. But the enrichment of um, the blessing of the Lord, uh, they are uh, these families are our families that love the Lord, and and to see them uh, growing and going on. To go back to the uh, the Syrian family. Um, it was five years ago now, and uh, they have become Canadian citizens. And so to see that milestone, and that is a, a mother and two girls. Uh, the oldest of the girls just finished her first year at University of Waterloo in engineering and business. And the younger is just completing grade 11, has aspirations for law. Um, well, I mean, the fact that Rosalind was involved in engineering at Waterloo, if you are aware of that program and how competitive it is, you know how well she does. Uh, likewise, the younger of the girls, uh, if she wants to go into law, she will, she's highly motivated and ready to work and put the effort into it and has all the aptitude to do it. So to watch them progress and develop and, and that as well. Uh, the, older, the older girl and mom are both driving in that uh, in that family, and uh, the younger one would, except uh, well, they only have one car. So at this point in time, she just has back off, and she'll do that when when she, it would actually count for something that she might have a crack at the at the car too. Um, so going then to uh, the most recent family, 
to walk with them through those stages of development, to be there, to be able to, to reflect to them uh, and with them some of the things that they're experiencing and, and uh, to seek understanding. Um, but as I said, to, to seek their options and to help them know their options without saying, and this is the way you have to do it. Um, there, I think it's valid to say, this is the way you will find that most Canadians might do it. <laughs> So it's fun. Yeah, just, just the relation, the joy of relationship and, and that. So uh, we're, we're connected very tightly. And, and that would be the case for, for many others in our committee as well. There's others that uh, are involved in bringing them to church and uh, they've built a very close relationship. Now, their little guy, uh, certainly mom and dad was his, own, his only confidence uh, and experience uh, other than his brothers previously and, and now to watch him in church, there's a few people that he'll go running to. Um, and uh, usually the, those, those people are seated somewhere close, but you know, it's not unusual for him during service to go and uh, one, one family, they call him grandpa and uh, yeah, grandpa and grandma and uh, be about the age of the grandparents of mom and dad in this family yeah, but he does a lot of driving for them and, and that as well so um, yeah just to watch that involvement wow that it's beautiful i love all those stories of how the the church family has come around them and supported them through this like long process of um you know having left their home country nine years ago right like that's such a long journey has um, helped them a lot and they're both at a point now that uh, they'll be able to get some professional driver training instruction, which will help um, with cost of insurance, but also uh, shortens the period of waiting time for the G2 from uh, one full year to, to eight months. So uh, that's, that's a high motivation to, to do the, the driver training as well. But those that have been doing the instruction said they're both, both very confident and, you know, the, uh, there's no big dents on the floor of the passenger seat where people have been trying to smash a brake or something like that. So, you know, I think when you're when you're teaching somebody how to drive, you feel like you'd like a brake pedal of your own, right? Mm -hmm. So again, those those kinds of involvements, um, I don't think I think we'd be hard pressed to tally the number of hours that have been expended uh, with, with the involvements all together uh, with this family, but I hear no one complaining. Um, I mean, we, we do consider and say, well, what, you know, again, wanting to be sensitive that they function as a family, uh, but they come from a culture uh, even though they were out of that culture for quite some time as refugees, they come from a culture that is far more hospitable, far more social than we Canadians tend to be. We get busy with our schedules. And so they, they welcome those connects, those contacts. And uh, so we're, we're rejoicing to see how it's affecting the church family as well. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Graham. This has been fantastic. Love hearing these stories. <laughs> Thank you so much.